Um, cool. All righty. Well, welcome everyone to our next session then as part of JiraCon 23. Hope you've had an awesome start of the day and session so far. Uh, super excited to be joining you then for our session, which will be focused on then advanced roadmaps in Jira software. What's new, some best practices, pro tips, and a few things that we've got to help you scale your agile ways of work. And also just how to do teams work effectively at scale in then Jira software. My name is Dominic. I'm a product manager at Atlassian in the team that actually helps to build advanced roadmaps and some of our other capabilities to help you then work effectively, collaboratively together across your entire organization. And joining me then also is my fantastic co colleague, Irene. She is also one of the product managers in our team who helps to build advanced roadmaps and some of the other capabilities that we have uh, that I'll touch on a little bit later on. And so she's going to be the one that's also going to be helping to manage some of the questions. So please uh, do use the Q&A space on the side of your screen. Uh, at any point, if you've got a question, just click that Q&A, drop your question in, and Irene will then help to reply and give you that real-time uh, answer that you're looking for as she's actually been helping to build some of the features that you're going to see today. So super excited to be taking you through them. All right, well, without further ado, let's jump on into it. So I wanted to kick off this session uh, with, and cool, so let's keep on going. All righty, uh, so what's new is where I'm gonna be kicking off. Then we'll talk a bit more about some of the best practice with advanced roadmaps. Uh, so if you've been, if you're brand new to using that nice plans button at the top center of your screen, I'll do a few quick things to help set the scene. And if you're someone who's been using it for a little while, I'll share with you some of the new uh, best practices that we've released around how we've improved things like our dependency reporting, how we've been able to enhance some of our roll-up views and more. Uh, and then some of the awesome features as well to help you then scale Agile. Uh, and a bit of what's coming soon, which is actually some of the things that Irene has been helping to build and bring uh, out to everyone here today. So. What's new in advanced roadmaps from Atlassian? First one, uh, and what I'll be covering here is focusing on things that have just shipped uh, over the past few months. The first one is, and we've heard you loud and clear and so super excited to say that advanced roadmaps now does support team managed projects. Um, I know many people have been asking for this one for a bit. And so what you now have is the ability to have then both company managed projects alongside team managed projects. And even better again, that also includes support then for Jira work management, all in a singular shared plan. So this is a great one if we start to think about now, hey, how do we improve then not just planning across technical teams, but also then across technical and business teams and being able to visualize the impact that can happen when, for example, maybe a release gets delayed from a dev team, how does that maybe flow on and maybe delay a, say, social media campaign that the marketing team was planning to help promote then that release? And so now what we're able to do is much better in real time start to see the impact of, say, dependencies, as well as also just to help making sure that we're all working towards the same shared goal. Next up, speaking of dependency reports, um, we have now a number of enhancements around just helping you being able to see who's impacted and what does that actually look like, as well as also improving communication. So you'll see here in the dependency report, and I'll do a bit of a live demo of some of these things a little bit later on. You can now group and filter dependencies uh, on some extra options. Uh, you can see here in the little sort of demo, you know, grouping by a sprint, but also on top of that, we absolutely hear you. It's one thing to have the dependency view in Jira and in advanced roadmaps itself. But when you're doing things like say leadership reviews, how do we now start to summarize that back into a confluence page? So that way you can add a bit more context around it. And so this is where now as part of that advanced roadmap macro, you can also then embed the dependency report directly into a confluence page. And the best part about that is you just need to embed it once. And then if you are having seeing things change, that is automatically then updating back into that view in Confluence. So it's a great way, again, to help really improve communication between teams and particularly if we start to think about, you know, sharing status updates to, say, leadership and, and management. 
Next up, this one looks like a little small button, hence why I've got the arrow pointing at it. Uh, but it's a really powerful one because you can now um, select more detailed changes, um, changes that you're going to push through in then Jira, I should say, in advanced roadmap. And those then, of course, then sync back into Jira itself. We'll talk a bit more about the sandboxing when I do the hands-on demo. But there's a nice little important box there that now says send the update notification. So that way you've also then got the ability when, say, you are making changes, maybe in which sprint or a status of an issue, um, you can also then choose for that to be then also sending that notification back to the relevant people who might be watching it or impacted by it. So a nice little but very important little button along the bottom there. Uh, also, this has been one, as we've seen then teams scale their ways of work and bring in larger and larger teams to collaborate in the plan. Certainly the plans can go from hundreds to thousands of issues in a singular advanced roadmap. And in that respect, this is where there's a, a nice uh, little new option, but a very helpful option, which is when you go into settings, you'll see there's a now a find your issue. And so if you are looking at that kind of the larger overall plan, you're like, hang on a second. I know in this example, let's say SSP 10 um, is in there some way. You can then just do a really quick and easy, find the issue and then jump straight to that in the plan. So this is a great one, particularly for those power users that are starting to manage uh, very, very large cross team plans. Now, speaking of managing large cross team plans, well, we got to get started somewhere. And so this is where our team have also been thinking about not just how do we make it even more flexible and powerful for the power users who are doing, say, very, very large, many team plans. But how do you get started? And look, we all have a first day. I certainly had my first day at Atlassian a, a while back. And you know that one of the key parts about it is helping people understand what's possible, but also keeping it approachable. And so we've made some big investments around ease of use and making it just easier to understand what is possible with an advanced roadmap. And you've now got a new option called sample plans. Now this is a great one, and I'd recommend this um, particularly if you are newer in your journey in using advanced roadmaps, or alternatively, if you're trying to help some colleagues where maybe you're seen as the local subject matter expert, but you know you can only scale your personal time so much. How do you help other people get started and seeing a bit of what's possible? And so there's a great now feature, which will, when you click create sample plan, it'll preload it with some example data around then some sprints that have been configured. It'll preload it with then some teams and it'll show the different teams how they interact. The best part about this, it's kind of a little sandbox. So it's not then creating extra noise back into Jira software itself but it's a really easy way now, effectively in one click to be able to then set up an entire plan that people can just kind of consider it like a safe sandbox that they can try things out and they're not actually changing, say, maybe a multi-quarter roadmap that a team is actually using. So this is a really great one for anyone that's getting started or trying to help other colleagues ramp up their own usage of then advanced roadmaps. Now, we've certainly heard you as well in that respect from the point of view of, hey, you know, advanced roadmaps, it's so powerful. Sometimes it's so powerful that we want to uh, not have quite as much on screen and we want to focus a bit more than say just on the list view. So think of me a little bit more like a spreadsheet rather than a timeline. And that's where we've now brought in, you'll see here in this GIF, a nice ability to be able to toggle between the timeline view, which we've had for a long time, which allows you to see, say, over multiple weeks or quarters, or you can now just focus on the list itself. And so these are the fields that you choose to show that are related to your issues. So now you've got the ability to really optimize that screen space where you might be just wanting to focus on the sprints, the story points, the teams, and which releases are working on it. Uh, and this is just, again, one of those great ones when we think about how do we improve usability. And it was one of those ones that came back loud and clear that we've now been able to ship out to you. Finally, from some of the, the what's new, there's plenty more, but I only I wanted to just do a few of the highlights as part of kicking off our session together today. This one is around now top level planning. And when we talk about agile at scale, this has definitely been a big area that people have been asking about, which is, well, hey, um, you know, I might be a bit newer to using some aspects of the JIRA issue hierarchy. And one of the great powerful things about advanced roadmaps is it supports many levels above Epic. However, we appreciate that for, you know, getting that set up for the first time. Um, you know, it can take a few people a little bit to get used to. And so this is where we've made it, again, much easier, similar to the sample plan. We've now got a brand new template, which is designed to actually pre-configure both advanced roadmaps 
as well as also then some projects to actually show, well, how do you now do tracking of things above the epic? So top level planning brings in the concept of say an initiative, which sits beyond the epic, but you could keep going further beyond that as well. What's also great about this is because you now have this flexibility around that issue hierarchy, which we've had for a while, this template just makes it a bit easier to get started with. Um, you can also just imagine how you could implement other frameworks given their own terminology, such as safe, we might have, say, a capability, which sits above a feature, but then you can roll that up into an epic, but at a different place in the hierarchy. The short takeaway of this is what would have been many clicks previously is effectively now just clicking the use this template so that way you can get started for when your organization is looking to start to do some of those more scaled agile practices. All righty. So there's a whole lot more updates as well that we've been shipping over the previous quarters. Uh, this was just some of the more recent ones that I wanted to do a bit of a highlight on. Now, for those that are wanting to say, hey, I want to learn even more, um, just as a quick reminder, you can always click when you go into JIRA in the top right-hand corner, you'll see there's the what's new. There you'll see what I've taken you through right now and much, much more, not just advanced roadmaps, but across JIRA software uh, and all of the Atlassian products. But we're up to now our next part of the session for today, which is some of the best practice with advanced roadmaps, as well as also some of the key concepts that I wanted to take everyone through together today. So let's jump on. All righty. And I'll do a quick check of, and a quick reminder as well, as I'm going through this next part, you'll see here we have, uh, I'll do some, I'll do a live demo, so please, keep uh, taking advantage of that Q&A box uh, on that right-hand side. Irene's here live to help go through and answer any questions that you might have, just as a, a quick friendly reminder on that one. Alrighty, so what I might do is take you through then just a key first concept, and then we'll start to jump into some progressively more um, pro tips, as well as also some of the newer capabilities that have been released. Speaking of newer capabilities that have been recently released, what you'll also uh, probably immediately notice, I would imagine, is if you haven't tried it yet, uh, Advanced Roadmaps has full support then for our lovely new dark mode. Um, so by popular request, uh, it's always a great one to, to give it a try, uh, particularly for those who might be working a little bit later in the night, want to save their eyes uh, from the amount of light coming off the screen. But let's jump into advanced roadmap specifically. So first thing that just to quickly call out as a, as a nice reminder here is that everything we're doing inside of the advanced roadmap, it sits inside of a sandbox. So for example, here, the scenario that we're looking at today is this is a electric car company, but this could be any technology company. Um, because you know, most companies around the world are becoming both a blend of software products and then the services that they're delivering out to their consumers, whether it's a physical good like a car or a solely digital good like a, a SaaS product. And you'll notice when I go here and we change, say, our multimedia streaming issue from Sprint 1 to Sprint 2, on the top right-hand side, when I click on Review Changes, this is one of the most powerful things that we have, but also definitely one of the biggest things just to make sure that anyone who's using advanced roadmaps is aware of is it will not commit back to the actual end JIRA issue until you hit that all important save selected changes in JIRA. You'll also notice one of the, the newer capabilities that I was, had called out, which is the ability to make sure that people also get then um, notifications. But again, we totally hear you that sometimes you don't want to do, say, a bulk amount of uh, notifications out if you've made a lot of changes. So this is why what you'll see, for example, is it by default it's unchecked but you've always then got the option for it you can also see then like issues if you've been working on this for a little while you can even select the issues that you might have just updated today if you've been in say a multi-day planning session compared to those previously in this example though i will hit discard so that way it rolls these back so just a critical one um, for anyone who's getting started then in advanced roadmaps to be aware of it all right so now let's start talking about kind of the the three key capabilities that we have if we think of ultimately getting work done, which is around how do we scope work, how do we make sure we figure out the time when that work will be delivered, and then the effort that's required to deliver the work itself. And so in that regard, this is really where we have a number of capabilities designed to really help support each of those kind of the, the trinity of kind of how do we ultimately ship things out to our end users, to our customers and get projects done. The first one is you'll see here in our views is a key concept. Um, you'll notice we have a number of pre-made views from the top level planning, dependency management. I'm currently viewing it from sprint capacity management. And you've always got the ability then to uh, view, a create your own new views or manage these existing views. 
What I'll focus on right now is if we start to think about the impact of scope. So one of the big ones is you'll notice here, speaking of scope, which is the number of story points, or you might be estimating in say the amount of hours of effort that something takes to complete. A really powerful capability is that you have is to be able to roll up then the overall effort effort of lower level issues up to the higher level issue. Now you'll notice here in my view that this will apply to uh, many different pieces of data. And I've, I've, when I've been working with customers and particularly those who are saying, hang on a second, I've not seen this roll up view before. Uh, this is one of the first best practices that I'll call out is we have a number of settings that are for you to be able to then best manage what sort of data that you're looking for. So if you're not seeing the rollup view today, just simply click on the view settings in that right hand side there and make sure you click on dates and others. So you'll see here if I uncheck the two, you'll notice it's actually now disappeared. So if, if you were just saying, well, hang on a second, this is what I've been seeing and I've not been able to figure out why don't I get to see my uh, sprint rollups, my story point rollups, release date rollups, well, that's the reason for it. Make sure you go over on that right hand side and click on your dates. Awesome, easy as that. Next up, you'll see here, if, you're, if we start to think a bit about, uh, we'll go to effort. Now I'm in my sprint capacity management, but hang on a second. We don't see now the level of capacity and effort that that's now taking per sprint. And again, this is one of those next best practices to be aware of is advanced roadmaps, is a highly configurable way to be able to best meet your own planning and delivery approach. So this is why we give you almost, I kind of like to think of it as a, as a very broad toolkit um, where you can then select and customize the views, the fields and so on. But again, one of the questions I often get asked is, well, hey, how do I set my optimal view, particularly if I'm focused on managing the effort across teams? Well, this is where you'll, you'll notice here on that right-hand side, as soon as I change the group by, well, because I've now changed it to group by, say, for example, project, a project doesn't have a concept of capacity. A team does. Um, and so this is where, as I now start to scroll down and clicked, uh, clicked on just one down, I should have clicked on the team. You'll see it immediately then brings back the team's capacity. And this is where we can now immediately see that in, say, Sprint 2, our operating interface team is actually a touch over capacity. So that team has 35 points of capacity. I should say 35 points of effort assigned to them for this sprint, but they've got 30 points of capacity available. And so now we can start to have a bit more of a conversation about how would we rebalance then these next couple of sprints to best meet this need. But this is just one of those really important ones to be aware of is that ultimately to be able to then do this effort management, it's about then how do you group the work together so that way advanced roadmaps can start to show the, event, the capacity and effort required. Now, for those that are saying, well, hang on a second, how did we even decide that it's 30 points in the first place? Uh, next up from just a bit of a quick pro tip to be aware of is this is where the all important teams on the left hand side comes into it. So you'll notice over on the left hand side, I have now my teams and each of these issues, each of these work streams is owned by a particular team. And this is where I can now, again, based on my organization and my needs, if your organization does, for example, uh, works in two week cycles and iterations, or if you work in three weeks, no problem, you have that flexibility. So this is where I can go from my team settings and I've got the ability then to choose the amount of capacity that a team will have on average as well as also the length um, that they work on those cycles for, whether it's a sprint cycle or if we're thinking about scaled frameworks like an iteration cycle. One thing to keep in mind is if you're saying, well, hang on, I've not actually been able to see ever the capacity. If you are just using Kanban boards, that will be the reason why you do need to be using a scrum planning style. So just a quick pro tip there on that one, just to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Speaking of, while we're just talking about capacity, I'll talk, one more of those options is when I go over and click on the plan settings, you'll notice here under scheduling, this is where I can change the type of effort that we put in to scope our size of work. So in this example, I've selected story points, but your team and organization might choose to use hours or days of effort. And so you'd simply just cho choose which one that you'd like to have as part of this on as in the plan settings. Awesome, alrighty. Let's keep on going. And 
great to be seeing then a number of the questions coming through and please keep those up uh, in the message space. Fantastic. Cool. So we've so far we've spoken about effort. Now, actually speaking of just as I finish off on effort, there's also one that comes up, which is, hey, well, what happens then if my team on average has say 30 points of capacity, but in this example, um, maybe I know someone's going to be away. So we know for sprint two, one of our developers will be out. And this is where you could also then change the amount of capacity that the team will have for that sprint. So in this example, we might say they'll have 20 points. And then when I click done, you'll now notice, for example, this sprint here, has 20 of 20 points allocated. So you just saw in real time that little bar fill up to the very top, as well as also we now know that we're over capacity. So we might actually need to move something over into say um, sprint three, given that fact. And by moving it now into sprint three, we've been able to rebalance the work across the team while also acknowledging that in sprint two, one of our uh, developers um, is maybe away and therefore we're going to have less capacity, but they're going to be back from leave in sprint three, which gets us back to our full 30 points of capacity. And right now we've currently got 15 points scheduled for it. Fantastic. All righty. So this is now the final part. If we think of, we've spoken about scope, we've spoken about the effort to deliver on that scope, but what about time and how do we start to measure our ability to actually get work done on time, which is always a super important part. Well, this is where you're going to start to see the next key part here, which is around our releases. Now, you'll notice we have two releases so far that have been showed on this advanced roadmap. We have one which is off track by 18 days, and one which is currently looking again off track because I just made a change here of this sprint three. I should say of my gestures interface to sprint three. As soon as I move it back to say sprint one, well, bingo, we now know that our release is on track. Now, for those that are saying, hang on, releases, Dominic, how did you even get this on the timeline? Well, that's from the all important releases on the left hand side here. Now, this is one of the things that we see is really powerful if you think about how do we align teams and work because ultimately, as we're starting to move from one team to now having multiple teams coming together to deliver, whether it's delivering something like a mobile app, a backend service, or in this example, elements of a vehicle and the internal, say, electronic system to support around, like, say, infotainment um, and charging, which as we start to see, you know, cars are a great example of where they've evolved in the past few years from being traditionally very mechanical to now also very much based on software and services. Well, we now need multiple teams working together. And so this is where you have the ability then to create releases across then different teams and track that and also be able to see, well, what's the impact? Just like then a moment ago when I went back and said, well, hey, we know we had, um, we're over capacity in sprint one, let's just move something back to sprint three. Well, that actually then was going to now put the entire release off track. And so this is where you'll see here that our operating system interface team, their due date is November 3rd. And to be able to create your own release, all you simply need to do is click the nice create release button. You can give that release a name, you can give it a start date, you've got a few options, whether it's start as early as possible. You could also make a start being relative to a previous release. So let's say we know after we've done this media UI release, we then will go across and do another portion. And similarly, again, with the release date, you can have it being a fixed date, or it could be dynamic based on when all of the issues are done. The reason though that a moment ago, it showed up and said it was going to be overdue is because, again, I'm using a fixed date here and saying, well, this needs to get done by November 3rd. Our management's made it clear. And as one of the team leads is making sure I'm trying to bring the team together, that's the date we need to work towards. So if we go back onto the timeline, another quick pro tip is you'll notice here, I've simply, when I've clicked on it, I have now the checkbox that says highlight on timeline. If I was to uncheck it, you see that the line removes. But as one of my personal favorite ones just to do is I always like clicking the highlight on timeline. I just find it's nice to actually kind of see that as soon as, for example, here, when something goes past that blue line coming down, for example, if I click sprint two, or I should say sprint three, it, no, go, it goes past. And if I was to quickly click on save selected changes, you'll now notice the whole thing has gone red because I've now just committed my issue to actually complete after that November 3rd due date, which is now why we can see here that it's dynamically let me know, well, because I've just moved a piece of work into sprint three, 
And sprint three will actually complete 12 days after this release that I was working towards. So I now know, hey, probably that was not quite the right call in my planning phase. So let's maybe move this back to um, sprint two or sprint one, or I can start to do again, a bit more rebalancing of seeing here where I had something that was maybe five points. So I might move say five points worth of work into sprint uh, two and so on. Perfect. Awesome. All right, just like that now, we can see it's back on track, but now I still might need to do a bit of work to rebalance the actual workload between my team. Last, but certainly not least from this view here is we have our lovely then list view. So this is where one of those, those new capabilities I was talking about, if you're like, hey, I just wanna focus on the fields, I just wanna focus on which release and the work getting done, we've now been able to, again, tidy up the view and we're now just able to focus on the fields. One of the beautiful things now is we also then support custom fields as well. So you've really got a lot of flexibility here on what you choose to bring into the view. So for example, if you wanted to have something like, let's say um, a date field start to show up, say the due date, just like that, fantastic. I've now got my due date showing. And that due date now is also, like we spoke about a moment ago, because I've got that roll up view, I now know that my multimedia integration Epic will be completed on November 1st, according to then the contributing issues that are uh, that are its children. So we have two that'll get done on the 18th, one finishing up on the 1st. And now I now know dynamically it's going to be the first for that overall Epic. As a quick pro tip as well, you'll notice here that as I've been going through, I've made some changes to this view. And I spoke about how you can create your own views or you can modify these existing views. So one of the best parts is we have that nice little word that says edited. So if you're like, well, hang on, I don't have to come back and then redo this whole view every single time. Fantastic news is you absolutely don't need to. You've got the ability to simply click save. And you'll see here that this is now going to save this view exactly as I've done it. So for example, if I was now to go to my top level planning and I'm like, great, I've got, you know, I'm thinking here now more at my overall program levels of work, how everything is rolling up, all of the teams contributing to it. But now I want to double click and say, well, what's the actual work? Uh, how is the work going to get done? What's the level of effort being applied across the teams? Is it well balanced? As soon as I go back across, you'll notice here, it has saved the view that I had previously. So we no longer have the timeline. I'm just in the detail. I'm just focused on that list view. Or for example, of course, I can always bring that beautiful timeline back, totally flexible. And as soon as I've done that, you'll notice here on that, again, it's now the option where I could reset it to the view I had a second ago. If I'm like, ah, actually, I really like the list view. Or again, I could save it to be as is. So if I click that reset, boom, just to how it was when I had last saved it. So this is now giving you a really high degree of flexibility as well as also capability in terms then of when we're starting to think through how do we start to do planning across those key areas of scope, time and effort across the different teams. Um, and then you'll see here, I've got you know, many more teams. Let's talk a little bit more now about that left-hand side. I've taken you through teams. I've taken you through releases. Let's click on the dependency report because this dependency report has seen quite a lot of enhancements over the past few quarters to really make it easier to be able to see how is work going across different teams or even within a singular team. And so this is one where I've always liked the saying, you know, a picture says a thousand words. So we can get started here and we can immediately see then how work relates to each other from a dependencies point of view, where work is blocking each other. But this is actually a little tricky for me still, as great as it is to see how the issues are blocking each other, as I've started to scale my teams and we have more teams working together, and now that we can even have say marketing teams and business teams that are showing up in this project, because ultimately shipping a product out to our customers is not just the code getting into production, but it's also the business side, getting it into our a customer awareness, or if it's a sales part of the business, that our sales team is aware of this capability of shipped, so that way they might be able to close that next deal. Well, I actually would like to see then, how is this work impacting my different teams that I have here or my different projects? And again, this is where we have all of those new um, views here from being able to roll up. So this is where some of those new capabilities I was taking you through just a little bit earlier. You've now got, you can roll up across your hierarchy as well as some other options. You've also got the ability to group by epics, projects, teams, or even project or sprints, or you can then focus on just a specific issue. 
We've really invested a lot to be able to enhance how it best meets your team's needs. And we appreciate that different teams work differently together. And that's totally why we're continuing to invest into giving you the right set of flexibility to meet your own needs. But in this example here, I'm gonna do a quick group by team. And so we see an interesting thing happening, which is actually we have two teams that have some dependencies within the team. So our battery charging team and our operating interface team. They've got some dependencies within their own team that they need to manage, but there's a pretty interesting one here that happens with our OS team, which is actually, there's an entire social media campaign, campaign being planned around having this next generation interface coming out to get in the hands and really delight our customers. But what we're seeing here is that is going to be, is currently going to be blocked to get out to our customers because it's depending on our uh, integration planning capability actually getting done. And so this is a great example now where we're seeing Jira work management and Jira software coming together. In that regard, this is a really interesting one if we start to talk a bit more about the different integrations, which is if I actually open up that team itself, and this is now opening up a Jira work management pro, uh, actually that one should be back there. I was doing the demo a little bit earlier today. Um, you'll see here, even in the calendar view, what we have now is the due date for this. But on the right-hand side, we've also got a really interesting capability that we've brought in, again, to bring technical teams and business teams together, which is then around the ability to bring in, say, for example, here, our OS team and then their releases. And so this is a great one for those who are saying, well, hey, how do we see Jira projects working together? How do we start to see more work coming in? And so we can see then, um, options flowing through on our view as if we move across to then November, we can see that media release that I was talking about a little bit before, whether its current status is unreleased. And we can also see if it's on track or off track. And remember we were talking a bit more about in those in the planning phase, what do we need to do to make sure that we can stay on track for our November release date? And so this is a great one for those that, and this is a brand new capability that's rolled out just recently as we talk about how do we further improve that cross team experience between then those software teams and those business teams. So if you've not given this a try yet, definitely recommend checking it out. And again, this is where you're seeing our investments in advanced roadmaps also helping to plan and get bring teams together where it's not just then at the team level or the project level, but then also back up into advanced roadmaps where we can then visualize work and how that impacts the different teams themselves and dependencies. Fantastic. All right. So we've gone through our four areas on that left-hand side. We've gone through the timeline, the teams, the releases, as well as also the dependency report. But you might be saying, well, Dominic, there's actually something interesting going on here. I noticed you've got this color that's on the whole thing. And this is one of our more advanced features that I wanted to talk about as part of some of the pro tips. As you mature your capability and your organizational use of advanced roadmaps, this is where you'll notice when we go and click on plan settings under advanced, so on that left-hand side here at the bottom of list, we have scenario planning then within advanced roadmaps. Now, by default, scenarios is off because again, this is more of an advanced feature. So this is where uh, if you've not tried it yet, I'd strongly recommend click on plan settings, go over, click scenarios, enable. You can always disable it so it's not a, a one-way door. You can absolutely, uh, if you just wanna keep it clean with a singular scenario, you can do that. But where this gets really interesting is as we start to see things like big room planning, more complex, say, iteration planning, where there's a lot of questions that are up in the air and it's not clear exactly which scenario do we wanna stay with because we have maybe a scenario A, which we get, um, our, which is our current state or scenario B, where we have say a funding increase. We're maybe asked for some extra headcount. We're waiting to hear back from say leadership if they're gonna give us an extra 20, 50, 100 developers. And that would radically change what we could deliver over the coming months, quarters ahead. And so we wanna plan out those scenarios. We can even then talk about, hey, this is the business case where if you gave us that extra you know, development capacity, that extra business capacity, we could deliver things sooner. And so this is where you've now got the ability in advanced roadmaps to play those scenarios out. And you can create more, you can choose the color that you would like to have for the scenario, you can inherit from an existing, and then you can give it, of course, your scenario name. So when I go back to my plan, this is where you'll see I'm currently sitting in the current scenario, which is, Going through, and if we have a quick look here at my, I'll bring the timeline back up. 
So let's say uh, we there's just not going to be people are on leave. I've not got any more funding support. So I'm really sorry to say it, but actually we're not going to be able to ship on time. Um, I want to do the right thing by my team. And it's just, it's not doable to hit that November date. So I'm going to have to commit this and we're just going to have a hard conversation about missing a key date. We're going to have to push back the media campaign. It's going to be painful for all involved. Ouch. But this is what, this is what our current scenario is. It's going to be a painful one for the business. But let's talk about, well, what happens if we're successful with that increased funding? Well, this is where it gets interesting because what you'll start to see here is this has now got a different set of changes that have been applied. So, and you'll notice that I can, for example, discard changes that I've made previously for this scenario. So now it's in sync uh, with the two where we're gonna be off track. So let me just do one more kind to quickly show. So right now, these are both exactly the same. There's no changes to be reviewed here. But now when I go into our increased funding, well, it turns out the business is really invested and we say, hey, we really need to hit that November release date. So let's talk about what needs to happen to get there. Well, I would say at a minimum, we need to make sure we ship in say our sprint two, but again, we're going to be over capacity. So what we'll actually need to do is, you know, bring someone over, bring someone over to this team. And so this is where it gets really interesting when we start to talk then about what's possible as well as also the different teams and the work that can be done. So you'll notice here is if I bring all of these things back to say Sprint 1, if I go now to my current scenario, it's still in that current state. And so I can start to go through and then play out what if scenarios. I could play what if we had increased funding, what if we were to bring everything into an earlier Sprint. And then you'll notice that the review changes, this all stays in the sandbox. And so I can then basically say, do I keep with this scenario here where maybe even two things need to go back to sprint three? And do I save this back into JIRA? Or did we get some increased funding support and I can actually review and save this one, which makes sure we achieve our release, release on time. And so the best part about this is you can kind of think of them similar to like a source control. You can have branching scenarios and then discard and merge them back into a singular at the end, depending which one is actually the one that you choose to proceed with. So we might be, turns out, no, we never actually got that funding support. So this in this scenario here, we would just discard the changes. We could even just delete this entire scenario itself. And we do have to stick within our current scenario. Or alternatively, perhaps we did get the extra funding, which means we could go back and we could commit the changes now with the new funding headcount. But it's a really great way and a very powerful way that we've now got to be able to then go ahead with actually then doing some much more advanced planning. Um, and it's a really good one that I would strongly encourage people to, to consider giving it a try in terms of how you can actually then go through in having those much more longer term, um, much more longer term planning conversations, as well as also when there is often with longer term planning, there's higher degrees of variability around, well, what could be done by when and how do we tr keep track of say, you know, if I start to expand this out, there's then many, many more teams um, that are going through that we would then need to start have this conversation about. And so whilst I've tried just for our conversation so far this today to keep it a little bit cleaner and simpler, you can see it gets very complicated very quickly if you're managing many teams, many complex streams of work, which is where this becomes very powerful when you combine then the sandbox capability within the scenario. Another way you could maybe even think about it, it's almost like a sandbox within a sandbox. One of the other quick ones, just as we're talking around that concept of having, say, longer term planning is just on the timeline here is just a nice little quick pro tip is you've got the ability to be able to then also customize the view of the timeline. So you'll see here right now it's currently set to months, but I could do this in quarters. And I'll talk a bit about um, one of the new features we have coming to quarters a little bit later in our session today as well as also years or even custom. So if we start to think about really long-term planning, this is where we've also invested quite a bit into the timeline to further improve that experience itself. And it's a really great way to be able to then also start to think through over longer periods, you know, when and where would work need to land, as well as also then from the release perspective, starting to visualize that in the longer term. And you'll see here, you can also then of course do those, all of these same views again, if we start to move between say our top level planning, which this one is perhaps say a um, more of that initiative view where we have like programs of work that need to be occurring over multiple months or potentially over multiple quarters. 
Um, so giving you a lot of flexibility then to start to look well off into the future and think about, well, what does your organization need to do to be successful, both in the long term, but then how do we put a plan in place today to be able to deliver on that over the next short term, whether that's days or weeks or a few months ahead. All righty. So we've covered a fair bit there. Let me just do a quick check to see how the Q&A is going. I see a fair bit coming through. Um, all right. Let me see if I can answer any of those live that may have not been answered yet. Uh, there was one there that was when I'm in a sprint capacity view, how do I adjust dates that the, is the projected sprint? Great question. So let me jump back to that one. That's a really good one to uh, maybe just do a bit of a live talk, talk through. So those projected sprints, um, that's currently, unless you explicitly define it, that is inferred then directly from the project level. Uh, I, I see it's by anonymous, so I would have normally said, you know, thank you name, uh, but thank you anonymous person who posted that into the, the Q&A. Let me just really quickly show you where that came from. So you'll see here, if we go on through to the actual project that's running this, so this is our operating systems um, Jira software project. And if I now go to my backlog, so our OS Jira software project, we can currently see we have got three sprints, sprint one, sprint two, sprint three. And if I go here and then click create sprint, Jira has got intelligence in it where it's like, well, obviously you've used the naming convention OI sprint. So therefore it adds the name to be sprint four. But what I can also do is I've got the ability to then edit that sprint. So I could explicitly make it a custom duration or I could then change um, like a, from a few quick set options. Right now I'm running on two week sprints, um, but what you can see here is that I do have flexibility. And so what this then does is this is what gives you the sprints as well as also the timelines. And what Advanced Roadmaps is simply doing is it's just trying to help visualize what does that look like over the longer term. And so a moment ago, I just created sprint four and you'll notice here, actually we now explicitly see sprint four showing up onto the um, timeline for our sprint capacity management. And now the rest are projected. So that's just a really nice one. Uh, and that's a, a great question. Um, perfect. All righty. Um, I see there's a good few other ones that Irene's been going through. Okay, James asked a really good question that I might talk just a quick bit more about. Uh, really good, good question there, James, on how does Jira align and roadmaps fit in with advanced roadmaps? Um, and roadmaps, see, yeah, advanced roadmaps seems very powerful. So, so Jira Align is a great product when we think about going to that really next higher level of, uh, if you are using, say, an opinionated framework, uh, like SAFE is very popular, but it could be others. I'll just use SAFE for the example um, here, just to kind of keep this, the conversation a bit more streamlined. And they take a, a view where they go from, say, feature to then capability to then epic. And this is really when we think about then those value stream management and how do we start to have long-term planning around like a risk registry, around then having, well, what does say their version of Epic, which is actually multiple levels higher in the hierarchy. Um, the short version is Jira Align is re really well suited for when you're having those business strategy conversations around what's the long-term of where we need to get to and how do we start to plan the large um, portfolios of work that need to be delivered on. When we start to get down to that solution and program level, this is where you'll see there's like that handover. And this is what's so great about Jira Align and Jira Software is where you can then step into from Jira Align into Jira Software, because ultimately the data here in Jira Software is what's sinking back into Jira Align. And so I've been working with customers who have had a very similar question and conversation, which look, we love love Jira Align for our more, say, executive leadership, our kind of director level, but the teams that are getting the work done, the product managers, program managers, uh, engineering managers, they're really living in kind of the, if we start to think about the capabilities of what's being delivered towards our strategy, and they're doing that from advanced roadmaps. And so this is where, again, it's up to your team, but typically what we see is Jira software can support up to a large solution in the SAFE framework um, quite effectively from the advanced roadmap and below. So that's going capability, feature, stories, and tasks all the way down. Um, and this is where it's a, a really nice way to kind of do a smooth handover as you then go from kind of that large solution in a, a safe framework up to then kind of the value stream um, portfolios that they manage at the top level. 
Um, if that sounded a little bit like a different language for those who don't use, say, safe for others, hopefully that made sense for those that are in those very highly scaled frameworks. Um, but the short version is from like your business, your multi-quarter financial sort of planning, Jira line's great. Then when you get into the actual tactical, when's going to get work going to get done, that's the perfect time to start to step into advanced roadmaps. So hopefully that helps to, to clarify that one. Uh, and great question. Perfect. All righty. Uh, in the interest of time, I might jump to start to talk a little bit about some of the things that are coming new. And I'll talk to then actually the, the perfect one, which is speaking of next level planning. So this is where one of those new features that I was referring to just a moment ago, uh, which was the top level planning. So one of the things that the top level planning template does is that actually helps a lot of then how do we start to move beyond the epic level and we move up in this example here where we have say program level. Now for those that are saying, well, hey, how do we actually find that snazzy sounding thing? All you need to simply do is go click on projects, create project. And what you'll see now under our left-hand side, uh, of course, you do need the permission to be able to create projects in your organization. Uh, if you don't have access to that for whatever reason, please then ask your Atlassian admin who does, because uh, they absolutely have access to this. It's available right now. And you'll see it does require, if you're using the top level planning and beyond, advanced roadmaps is a premium feature. And so this is where you'll notice it does just give you a little quick call out to say, hey, you need your software premium. But when we click on it, this will take us through. It talks about the issue types that we will have, and you'll notice that snazzy new issue type with program, as well as also some of the workflows. Um, and so we can go through, we can click use the template, and then we'll call this um, top project. Uh, we'll call it uh, we'll call it team uh, QLD, just as to give it a project QLD name. Fantastic. And so now when I go through, I can click create. Beautiful. So you'll see here, this has actually done a lot of what would have been clicks previously, and it's made that really direct and easy for you to be able to start doing some of those more scaled ways of Agile, which is the team that myself and Irene, who's been awesome to help to answer some of the questions in chat, uh, we're part of the Agile at Scales team. So we're focused on exactly these types of scenarios. How do we help you coordinate work across teams and then teams of teams? And so just like this, we've now got if we go back to the example that I was showing a moment ago, we'll call this our, um, if I stick with my car scenario, we'll call this the next gen driver program. And so we wanna have that next generation of interface for our users. We've been hearing that we're maybe falling a little bit behind in market, but that's a program of work. And this is where we'll then start to have the details that go into it. And those would typically be say your epics, your user stories and so on. Um, and so this is where it's guiding me through even how to configure everything. So in the interest of time, uh, I'll, I'll pause there and I won't go too deep into this, but you'll see we've made a lot of investments now to try and make it really easy to get started then also with some of these more advanced scenarios when it comes to things around, um, say, program level planning uh, and higher level work roll up. Awesome. Let me do a quick check if there's any questions that have popped up on that. Great. So. This is where I've just got a few last things for today, and then I'll finish with a few minutes for final Q&A, or if you need to go grab a drink before the, um, before the, final, the wrap up of JiraCon, um, I think it's always good to have a few minutes to quickly recharge. Uh, so this is where we're at. We just did our top level planning. So that's one of those new capabilities that's rolled out to make things much easier. Finally, we've, I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into what's coming next. There's a huge, um, roadmap that we're working on, uh, but not all of it. I'd love to be able to share all of it with you right now, but I can, I'll share a few things uh, as well as also then I'll share with where you can find out more information. So uh, again, when we talk about then planning, one of the things that we absolutely hear um, is that we have, you know, teams want to plan also in quarters, but also with the wonderful way our world works, quarters are not defined the same of financial years. For example, Australia has a different financial system uh, to the United States. Uh, and again, similar if you're in Europe or parts of Asia. And so we're gonna give and rolling out very soon the ability to then define whatever is your financial year quarters. So whether you're a financial year system that does a Q1 being January to March, or if you're uh, like me here in Australia, uh, if you're more starting from a July timeframe, you'll now be able to have that 
if you remember back to when I showed the timeline view and I was clicking on quarters, you can now have just a really nice clear Q1, Q2, and that will be your definition of Q1, Q2, depending on your financial years that you've set. Uh, and this is also one of the really big ones and a big call out to Irene. She's been doing some tremendous work for quite a while. It's been a, a massive lift across the entire team to get it done and a really, really powerful one, which is starting to then have what we've called flexible uh, naming or what some people call epic renaming, which is the ability to do have now, you might've noticed for those again, who are doing say opinionated frameworks like other scaled frameworks where they might choose to not use the word epic or they might not use uh, epic in the same place of the hierarchy. We hear you loud and clear. And so this is where we've now uh, been running a beta and it's coming very, very soon uh, to GA, the ability to then do complete epic renaming across the entirety of Jira. And so we've had for a long time now in advanced roadmaps where you could rename the issue hierarchy. But for those that have been uh, with Jira and with Atlassian for a good few years now, you might say, but Dominic, it didn't actually rename the Epic in different parts of Jira software. So for example, it would still refer to it as like the Epic panel, even if you've renamed it to being feature. And so this is one of the big things that we've really invested in. And so I'll do a real quick demo of uh, what you can get excited about coming very, very soon. So give me two moments. I'll just bring that one up. And then we're uh, almost finished. All righty, so here's my alternative demo environment, which is now using our good old fashioned light theme. And so this one is now starting to, to have implemented our epic renaming, not just at the advanced roadmap level, but you'll see how this flexible naming has flowed back into the projects. And so here we have a scenario where this is now more of like an airline industry where they're using safe as part of safe it goes story feature and then capability now we'll notice that feature currently here is showing up as, as expected for those who have been uh doing this for a little while now this is the magic part of when, where it comes and changes is for example when we go to the backlog you'll now notice what would have been called the epic panel previously is now also renamed to be feature or whatever name that you have selected it to be. So this is a, a great piece of work that Irene and team have been doing, um, which is to, you'll notice we've now re even renamed the field from being say Epic link, it'll be now called parent link. So we're keeping that consistency from a hierarchy perspective because every issue therefore is, is either going to be a child of another issue or it is the parent issue. But now because we've moved to this concept of parent and child, and then having that consistent through all of JIRA, you can now rename the entire hierarchy to meet whatever scaled agile approach or scaled fr or framework, whether even if you've got a waterfall methodology that you're really wanting to have your own uh, wording on. So this is just a big one that's been now really creating consistency across all levels of the JIRA software interface, not just at the advanced roadmaps, which we've had for a while now. And so it's a big one and a big shout out to Irene um, and the work that the team have been doing. Awesome, well, we're uh, almost fully at time for today. So let me take you through then to where you can get some more information. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying the session today. You've been like, man, there's some great stuff in there. I wanna know more about what's coming from Atlassian. So uh, a big pro tip is for both cloud and DC, make sure you can see what's shipped, what's coming soon, uh, when things are expected to roll out. If you click on over to atlassian.com forward slash roadmap. Uh, that's our public roadmap. It's a great one. It's also a great one to be able to start to see, for example, when we called out that we have like the early access program kicking off for our epic renaming and our flexible hierarchy. And for those that haven't tried it yet, if you are an Atlassian admin, I would say don't go to the even the public cloud roadmap. You've got a better place you can go again, which is from the admin hubs, which is actually the public cloud roadmap, but now it's built directly into admin hub. When you go under the um, products tab and then go to release management, this is a great new best practice to click on the product update section. So it's gonna show you what is on the public roadmap, but also with some extra detail where you can do things like on the right hand side there, you see a little screenshot example of you can then watch that specific release. So if there is a particular um, capability that you're either really excited about or you're needing to do some change management for, this is a great way to stay on top of things and across then upcoming changes. And you can select that across uh, many products. Uh, at, you know, In this example here, you're seeing Jira software. 
And it's a great one to be then using in combination with your release tracks, as well as also your sandbox for those that are using premium and enterprise edition, where you can then again, test new capabilities as they roll out in a sandbox, try them out, making sure everything's working in terms of your workflows. Um, and then you can make any adjustments needed as then they get moved from then the sandbox over into your overall main environment. So there's a, a fair bit in there that I, I hope you've enjoyed over the past time that we had together. Um, I'll, I myself and Irene will be around for just the last few moments. We'll do Q&A uh, in the chat space, but I know we've just got a few minutes before the closing remarks from Patrick. So I'd say, uh, if you're needing to grab a bite of food or a quick glass of water, now's your chance before we start to do the wrap up. And I hope you've been having a fantastic JiraCon. And I wanted to say a big thank you um, from myself and the whole Atlassian team. So have a great rest of the day ahead. Thank you.